Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Remy Roy and um, even though I've been MIA for a long time on this channel, life really happens my friends, I really am happy to be here and I really do hope you guys are all safe and well wherever you are in the world in these crazy crazy times. Well I'm happy to bring you another video and so what I'll be discussing in this video is um, answering your questions on my video series on creating a book cover using Canva. I realize that Canva is an accessible tool for most non-designers and really um, from the comments that I got on those videos, it was clear to me that many of you are sort of on the self-publishing journey and looking for ways to get quality results in an inexpensive way. So uh, I'm glad that the videos helped. I'm glad that um, you were able to um, find something useful and create your book covers because I did get a lot of comments with people telling me oh I did this, I used this, this is helpful. So I'm really thankful for your feedback on those videos. Um, so like I said, in this video, I'm going to be answering your questions because I did get some questions on those videos and um, I just have some answers that hopefully, um, if you're still on that journey, will help you. Or for those who might see this video later or go through the series of videos, um, because people are always um, having ideas and wanting to publish books, so it will always be helpful for anyone who needs it. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, the first uh, part of the video is right here. So how to create a book cover in Canva. So I'm gonna scroll through and go to your questions. Okay, so this question is by Kylo Games. So he or she says, so I have been trying to make book covers and I'm so worried about copyright laws. I'm a new author and I had a few questions I can't seem to find anywhere. Number one, if I made a book cover through Canva using their elements and photos, is it mine to use or do I have to go through some process to be able to publish using it? Number two, how do I go about making sure I don't infringe on anyone else's rights when making my cover? This is a very good question because it really is something you have to pay attention to. I have a personal story. When I published my second book from the sidelines, I found, because I was looking for a cover to use something really beautiful, I found an image online that I really, really loved. But it wasn't um, like a stock image that I could buy. It was just an image floating around on the internet. So I said, I want to use this image but I need to know that um, I wouldn't be infringing on anyone's rights. So I tracked down the photographer that took that image and I sent him a message. I think he was on Flickr at the time. I sent him a message and I said, hey, I love this photo. I want to use it for my book cover. Is there anything I need to do, um, you know, copyright wise? Because I know you took this photo. I just, you know, want to know if it's possible. And he replied, because I, I didn't really think he was going to reply. I thought I'll never be able to use it anyway if he doesn't get back to me. But he replied and said, hey, Remy, this is amazing. That this is actually my most stolen picture on the internet. And um, I'm glad you asked, but you can go ahead and use it. Now, I'm not sure if it was a wise decision for me to use a photo that was already everywhere, but it was so beautiful. And I ended up using it. Of course, I, um, you know, um, edited it and, you know, worked with uh, a friend of mine to make it look really pretty for my cover. And then I put his name on the book because I was using a photo that he took, you know. So you do have to pay attention to that. So what I would say, what I know for sure is that Canva has um, photos in there that you can buy. Now, there's so many um, photos on Canva that you can use, right, for your book cover. Some of them are free and some of them you have to pay for. Now, I believe that the free options, most of them are taken from um, websites like on Splash and Pexels.com. So this is Pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S.com. And all of the photos on Pexels, and I'm sure also on Splash, are free. So they are free to use in any project that you need to use them for. It says you don't have to attribute, you don't have to give credit to the photographer, even though they would really appreciate if you do, but if you don't, it's no problem. And it says you can modify the photos and videos, whatever creative um, resources that you get from Pexels, you can modify them and edit them as you like. 
And these are the use cases. You can use it on your website, on your blog, on your app. You can use it to promote your product. You can use it in print marketing material, like, like uh, magazines, albums, books, CD covers, and more. You can share them on social media. But they do have some things that you're not allowed to do. Is if, if, if there are people, identifiable people in those photos, you must not use them in a bad light or in an, uh, in an oh, I can talk to you, in an offensive way. You must not sell you know, the photos uh, without editing them in some way, you know, and some other um, cases that, you know, you're not able to use them. So I believe that if you use the free options in Canva, which uh, most of them come from sites like this, you can absolutely use them in your book and it's not going to be a problem. And you can credit um, the the photographer who took the photo. And you can just do a search, you know, you can just do a search to be able to find who created that image and then you can end up using it for free and you can credit them if you want. That's what I would do. Now for the for the options that are not free, so for, for example, there's some um, photos, so like this one, there's some photos in Canva that you have to pay for right i believe if you do pay for them you should be able to use it in your um book project and that shouldn't be a problem if you still want you can go ahead and credit um you know just put it in the uh, credits page and include the name of the photographer that will be nice but i think you're covered if you um use the elements in these two different ways so it's a good question and i hope that helps uh to answer that so the second question is um uh, Simisola Oguinka says, nice tutorial, thank you. So I'd like to know how to create the spine of the book and attach all to have the flat cover and a 3D cover. So she wants to know how to create the spine of the book and the 3D cover. I answered the question of the spine, but the 3D cover used to be like a real um, problem for me personally. But I have found um, a way that you can create a, a 3D cover on the internet for free. So pretty much like a mock-up that you can use in promoting the book and all of that. So there is this website that I found, which is DIYbookcovers.com. And if you go to this, I'm going to put the link in the description below. I'll put the link to any um, things that I mention, any websites that I mention in the link below. So DIYbookcovers.com. If you go to this website, you can easily create a 3D cover for your book without having to pay because it's free. Okay, and uh, it doesn't have a watermark that I think it used to have a watermark like you had to do maybe um, sign up or pay or whatever for you to remove the watermark. But I don't think that is the case anymore. So you should be able to use and it's pretty easy. So you choose um, the cover that you want to use. Say, for instance, you want this cover, you choose it and you click next and then you upload, um, you browse and then you pick um, whatever image you want to use. So for instance, I have this image that I created for a client, a wonderful client. I'm going to include that here and then you upload. It's going to create the 3D mockup for you. So it has uploaded um, the cover of the book and then you go to next. You go to next and then you here it has created the mockup. Here, you now download as PNG. So I'm going to download this as a PNG file. And then it will save that on my computer. And then I can go ahead and open it. And it looks like this. So this is a good option for you to create a 3D cover that looks really professional and clean and sleek and nice. And you can use it in promoting your book. If you want to use the... If you want to do the... Um, both the cover, the paperback cover, and maybe like a Kindle version, you can use any of these. And then there are ones that are composite, so you have all three, so like on your tablet, on your phone, and the paperback, you can use any of this. And all you have to do is upload one image, and it's going to do that. Let's just go ahead and do one of this, so you can see how it looks. So browse, click on the image you want to use, upload the image. Great. Click next. You have it. And then download the PNG and it's going to download the composite um, 3D mockup for you. 
save and let's see how it looks here you go so this is a beautiful image that you can use for promoting your book and anything else you want to do so that's um a good option for you if you're looking to create um, a 3d mock-up for your book the website is diybookcovers.com and i'll leave a link in the comment uh in the description down below all right so the next question i have is let me walk through that it's probably in the next video Okay, so the next one is you suggest uh, you suggest that create space to form a template for the book cover. Create space is now merged with Amazon. Can it still be used or in what way? Can the template be formed in Canva itself? So this is a great question, but when I created this um, video series, create space was still alive and well, but now everyone knows create space is now Amazon KDB. So um that's a, a great question. Can you still create the template? Yes, you can create the template. And um, I'm just gonna take you to the web. So I'm gonna search um, book cover template. Um, I should search KDP, KDP book cover template. And it will show you the option. So create a paperback cover, click on that. And um, scroll down here, you see download a cover template, click on that. Now, what it does is open up this option for you, and it's pretty much um, the same thing that was on Create Space. So, what you do is you select your book uh, trim size. So, let's say your book is five inches by eight inches, you click that, and then you put your page count. Like I said in the other video, when I was going through the whole process, if you have less than 100 pages in your book, you're not going to need a spine because it's just gonna wrap around the book and it's not gonna look pretty. So um, you don't need to do, um, you don't need a spine, but we'll, we'll get to that. So you put the number of pages. I had 194 pages in my book, my first book. So I'll just put that here. And the paper color is white and you can choose whatever you want and then download cover template. So it's gonna download that to your computer. You can open it up and it's gonna look something like this. Okay, so this is the template that you're going to use. And it's the same thing that I used when I created the video uh, when Create Space was the platform that we all used to create um, the paperback cover. So this is going to be the spine. And I think that was also another question about the spine, how you create the spine. Everything is right there on the template. This is the, um, the front cover, the back cover, and this is the spine. So when you're ready to do that, you just put the text right here on your templates and you should be good to go. Okay. So there was another question that wanted to know how to put the barcode on the cover. Okay. So if you're publishing through KDP now, you uh, all you need to do really is leave space for the barcode if you're going to get the barcode from KDP. So all you need to do is in your design, make sure that you have space right here in this yellow spot for the barcode. And when you're going through the process, when KDP is going through the process, they will put the barcode on there. But if you are purchasing your own barcode, all you have to do is put it into design so you can go through um, my video and I'm going to link it up here where um, uh, I you know, showed how to create the design using this template. If you have your barcode, you're going to just upload that as an image in Canva and you should be able to put it right here on that yellow spot. Okay, so I hope that's helpful for you. Um, so I think those are all the questions. Create space is now KDB kind of template process work. Yes, it's going to absolutely absolutely work and that is what I just showed you so depending on whatever trim size whatever the number of pages of your book it will fit into this template as long as you answer those questions correctly and you should be good to go now I know that um, you know the self-publishing process is a very um, difficult one for most people especially if you're doing it for the first time you are trying to get used to understanding you know design on, you know how to set it up on 
Amazon, how to promote your book and all of that. And I do have personal experience on that because I have self, self-published self three books. And if you want to hear about my self-publishing journey and, um, you know, or maybe just for me to talk about publishing in general and, you know, my experiences, the good, the bad and the ugly, let me know down in the, you know, in the comments section and just, you know, let me know if you have a question that you want me to answer or anything that you want me to address. And I would love to do that. I'm on this journey also like you, uh, but I'm excited to share whatever it is that I have learned and I'm going through. So thank you so much for listening, uh, for watching the video. I hope it's helpful for you. And uh, if you have any questions about um, creating your book cover in Canva, let me know down below and I'll be sure to answer the questions. Thank you so much for listening today. Have a great one. Bye.